Hey everybody, it's Norm from Testing, and welcome back to Projections, where this week we're gonna be looking at some new hardware announcements as well as some existing hardware. It's been a couple months since HTC launched the Vive Cosmos, this guy right here, in late 2019. And in light of some of the announcements they made to the Cosmos family of products at what was supposed to be Mobile World Congress this past week, we wanted to use this time to go to the Cosmos and talk about what's changed since its launch because there were some pain points and what HTC is doing to address that on both the software and hardware side. So if you watched our Cosmos review, you may notice that one of the things uh, that I had issues with and a lot of people out there had issues with was the tracking. It used a new inside out based tracking system using an array of six cameras on this faceplate here as opposed to the Steam VR Lighthouse Beacon base laser tracking system and with inside out tracking uh, even in that realm it was maybe the least impressive I had used before compared to things like the Oculus Quest or the Rift S or even Windows Mixed Reality. Part of that was the way they tracked its controllers with these big light rings and the occlusion problems they had as well as some of the drifting and the near field visibility issues they had when you put controllers close to your face uh, which you do very often in games games like Pavlov or any shooter games in which you hold a pistol or try to use a two-handed grip. I just It made those games not very fun. Now, since the Cosmos launch, HTC has been doing a bunch of updates, and one of the first updates they did to improve tracking was improve low light uh, sens sensitivity, or at least the threshold for tracking under low light so people didn't have setup problems, and also improve some of their prediction algorithms to make fast-moving games or games in which you use controllers a little bit closer to your face improve. I have been noticing some of that, but it's still a far cry from the high bar of tracking that we'd come to expect from the original Vive system and what Valve have developed with SteamVR. So this past week, they announced that, of course, the Cosmos, as was would be the plan all along, would also be able to support SteamVR space tracking with the use of an accessory, a faceplate, because you can pop this piece off. And I actually have that new faceplate. I've been using it for the past couple of weeks. This is the external tracking faceplate. I'm going to show you how it works. So inside the headset, there's actually a little button on the left side. You press that button and then that unlocks the faceplate and you can see that actually removes two of the cameras, the front and bottom camera, and still keeps these cameras and you can see that's the data port in which uh, new faceplates can get mounted. And then this, just plug that in and if you look closely on this new faceplate, you can see that it has those Steam VR. Uh, tracking sensors here that can see the sweeping lasers on the base stations. You still get the cameras that go through here, uh, and there are also radios on here that let you then pair it with your Steam VR controllers, like the original Vive ones, or if you have them, the Valve index controllers. I will say that even with some of the software improvements that HTC has done with the inside out based tracking system on the cameras, uh, you, I still have this issue of near field sensitivity and putting these controllers close to my face. If I'm holding a pistol, uh, I play Pavlov a lot and even though I can get a pistol relatively close to my face, I still see a little bit of drift. It just doesn't feel right and I struggle to get very precise shots when I'm doing that especially if I'm holding a two with two controllers uh, up close to my face on something like holding an SMG or an assault rifle in game. All of those problems, uh, as I hoped, are actually solved by using this new external tracking faceplate. And I've actually taken a liking to pairing my index controllers with this uh, for pretty, really, really good tracking. And it feels like using uh, the tracking that you have on the Valve Index or with the original HTC Vive, but of course, with the better image quality and optics of the Cosmos, because it has a pretty high resolution screen. So that's definitely a plus, and I think if you are a Cosmos owner and you have the opportunity to buy the new faceplate or you have the existing base stations because you upgraded from a Vive, it's almost a no-brainer to spend that $200 to make the Cosmos usable and playable and get a much better experience. 
And I was also able to go visit HTC in their San Francisco offices recently before Mobile World Congress was supposed to happen and not only get a briefing about their plans for the Cosmos line, but also ask them about their plans for Vive and Cosmos going forward. Now, you'll notice that we do reference Mobile World Congress a little bit because this was before they canceled the event. But if you can understand and bear with us there, I do think it's still an interesting conversation. Let's take a listen. So I'm here actually in the San Francisco offices of HTC and we guys work on Vive a lot. But right now as people are watching this, uh, you guys are probably over at Mobile World Congress because right. uh, there's a lot you guys are announcing and showing off uh, not only for HTC, but HTC Vive specifically. Um, I'd like to take a, a moment just to talk about where Vive has been and where it is now. You guys obviously launched the, the Cosmos uh, late last year, um, and you know, we reviewed it, and a lot of people had some thoughts about you know you guys' decisions are made. Every product's made with a thousand decisions. You guys chose inside out. What's been, what's been, where is Cosmos now, and what's been the development in terms of improving things like tracking? Yeah, no, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Um, the, the overall with Cosmos, it's a family product. Uh, we really designed it to work with a lot of different components and a plate strategy. Uh, the original six camera is what we launched with. Uh, yeah, the, the start of it, the tracking wasn't quite exactly where we wanted it to be, but we have made improvements to it uh, practically weekly, but every other week we've been dropping beta releases and then at least once a month putting out a full release improving the tracking. Uh, we've made a lot of improvements to the hand tracking uh, and the controller tracking uh, and the low light settings. And we really feel really strongly about, you know, come the end of January, where the tracking is going to be with this product. And that's an ongoing development process? Yeah, I think for us, what we saw as we launched Cosmos was there's, there's just a lot of optimization for various VR movements. So whether I'm boxing is a little bit different than whether I'm doing a bow and arrow, different than sword slashing or sabers or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And so what you'll see from our engineering team is that they, we've gone movement by movement to really improve each of those scenarios. And so where we started a few months ago, we're, we feel we're in a dramatically different place. And so, and it will apply to the entire Cosmos family that we'll probably talk about after we're done time traveling to Mobile World Congress. So from an engineering standpoint, is it really the case that, like, is, does the software, for example, know that you are potentially jumping into a shooting game versus a boxing game? Or is it gonna be the same type of tracking at all times. Yeah, it'll be the same type of tracking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want that experience to be consistent. I think we were just using those more advanced uh, examples to be able to improvement for the overall experience. Absolutely. Well, something you guys are showing off and it's new is uh, a family that you said uh, right. for, for Cosmos. And it sounds like this was the plan from the beginning. So tell me about what the family now entails. Great. So, you know, being here, you know, with, uh, I guess, Mobile World Congress, Future State, uh, we are announcing um, two new plates. Uh, we will have a, uh, a new four camera SKU called Cosmos Play, which will just have four uh, inside out tracking cameras. Uh, then we'll also have our six camera, which is the original launch product. Those will work with the original controllers and the inside out track controllers. Uh, then we will also have an external tracking plate, which works with the Steam uh, VR tracking technology. Uh, so we will also have, uh, with that, there will be three Cosmos SKUs, Cosmos Play, Cosmos, and Cosmos Elite, which the Elite will have the external tracking. And then that will work with your Steam VR controllers, work with your Steam VR accessories, peripherals, trackers, um, any other object that uses Steam VR tracking, that headset will now work with it. Uh, so now you have these three products. So, uh, and then the, any existing user that's out there that has already their Steam VR system, um, this is a great way for them to just get into the basic play version and then up also have the external tracking plate. So it gives a lot of versatility. It also gives people that maybe have that, that tracking area at home with their Steam VR tracking and they want to take it on the go with them uh, and they can move to their inside out track system. Right. What are the tracking differences between a four camera plate and a six camera plate? Uh, it's just the, uh, the top and bottom cameras. So it gives you a little bit less uh, tracking area on your, your vertical uh, area. Other than that, it's all the same tracking accuracy um, with your controllers. Um, it's really meant to just, you know, for users to have maybe a lighter entry level experience mm -hmm. um, and go into those experiences. And then if they want that higher tracking area uh, because they're doing, you know, 
more robust games, things where they're you know taking their hands behind their heads and things like that. Um, they might want to move into the six camera, you know, and then um, you know, of course, if they want to just use the 360, you know, laser tracking from Steam VR, they can use the external tracking plate. Is there in, in terms of tracking volume? I understand that you know you may not get the same amount of coverage on above and below, but in terms of distance from headset, is that the same as yes. as well? Okay. Yes. So any of the near field activities, that would be exactly the same. We're literally talking about putting hands behind heads. Right. That, that. If you see on the, um, the six camera version here, what's in market right now, those two cameras are effectively the ones that will be um, to go away on the Cosmos play. Right. So they'll have the two base, which you'll see there, and are consistent across all the Cosmos lines. And then you said on, on the Elite, on the, the high end, the $200 is higher than the Cosmos. Not only is that the Steam VR tracking plate, but also that would include the base stations and Vive controllers That's as well? right, yeah, it's the full kit. Mm. So just like the original Vive, controllers, base stations, cable, uh, uh, you know, you just get the newer higher resolution fidelity, the screens, the comfort of the, the Halo band. Um, we're really proud of this design and the weight distribution on it. Uh, and the flip up design, you know, it was something that we designed for, you know, in the very, very beginning of this product. Learning everything we did over the first Vive and Pro um, users and use cases, um, just having the product be able to be convenient, easy, easy to be able to move from reality into virtual reality, um, those are all really kind of key features that we wanted users to be able to have. I mean, when you guys designed, even from the original Vive, it sounds like modularity was a priority for you guys. People bought the Vive one year, next year they could get the Doxelio head strap, next year you guys are selling the tracking pucks, and it seems like Cosmos has a similar strategy. You know, there's options for things like the headphones as an accessory, different controllers, the, the faceplates, of course. How far do you see that going out? Is this the... Is this the extent of the Cosmos family, or is that... I think we're going to no. I think we're going to continue to see the Cosmos family and the plate strategy even grow even more and more functionality. The um, we do think that asking the user to burden a new headset or a specific headset to only do a specific thing is a lot to ask. Yeah. And we do think that this modular design and this little modularity. Um, lends itself to a broad audience, and if you can play in those different price points, it lends itself to a nice broad audience that can even grow with you over time. Uh, we do think that the plate strategy is going to continue, and we will announce another plate, you know, at Mobile World Congress this year, and that's going to be our external tracking, uh, our I'm sorry, our XR mod plate as well, which will have you know pass-through cameras, and we'll be showing for the very first time, you know, demo experiences with. Uh, AR or augmented virtual reality, as we call it, um, experiences where users will be able to interact with um, their real space with augmented overlays and even be able to start playing with things like hand tracking. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about actually expanding now into an augmented reality space uh, with the Cosmos headset. Mm, well, let's talk about that, the, the XR Plate. Um, and you guys have, I think, one here that Troy has over there. Uh, so this has cameras underneath, and you still get the tracking with the existing That's right. four cameras. You no longer get the top and bottom camera, yes. um, but uh, how are these cameras in the front different? They're, because so you these, had a, a version of pass-through. That's right, um, and those were the, the original version of pass-through was really built for like safety. Mm -hmm. uh, so when the, um, you know, the, the chaperone system, while you were in Steam VR, you know, the, the cameras would come on. It was more about being able to see where you were mm -hmm. um, from a safety perspective. It wasn't really meant for augmented developers. Sure. This really fits into our create strategy um, where we want uh, creators, developers, uh, proof of concepting business professionals, you know, to look at now how they're going to start developing. So, you know, come, you know, this year, we will actually have this plate strategy available for the developer community. We really feel like in 2020, this is going to be much more focused on the creative uh, side, uh, the developers, um, professionals, what they're going to start making with it. Um, so we're not really uh, making this available for consumers just yet, uh, but mo mostly just developers. But you want to seed enough features in there in terms of the, the field of view, That's the fidelity right. of cameras, your, right. your refresh rate. To, you, ha you set that high bar now so developers can take advantage of 
whatever CV they want to tap into, um, and, and tracking, like you said, hand tracking yeah. as well. Um, and, and this has all those features in terms yes. of stereo and, and full color and, and high refresh rate? Yeah, it's an interesting jumping off point if, I, if you're a developer today because you know existing AR functionality in the marketplace, your field of view is really, really limited in some cases. In this approach, you will receive almost the full panel um, from an AR function as well as the VR function. So it's going to really enable some really interesting uh, developer applications. We're overlaying digital, overlaying you know, real world, et cetera, but at a much higher degree than is capable for a lot of products right now. So it will have depth mapping. It will have um, stereo mapping. Uh, occlusion mapping, so the users, you know, developers will really be able to take off with this thing. We'll be targeting existing XR developers that are out there now, uh, making sure that they're aware of it. Uh, we have a lot of enterprise B two B professionals that are really excited about this and being able to have that kind of mixed um, functionality with one headset in a professional space and being able to move between the different plates as opposed to moving between. You know, <laughs> multiple headsets and 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 trying to set up different tools, and um, we will make available you know simple tool sets you know for everybody to be able to just move between you know the different plates from a developer standpoint. So when this comes out uh, later in Q2 uh, for developers, uh, they'll be able to then get the software package, the development package with this headset as well. And that's a lot of work to to make that package, have all those features. How much of that is piggybacking on what you guys did with? the Vive Pro and the kind of little bit of XR that was there. Yeah, I think that was really just kind of, the, that showed us exactly what we needed to be able to provide from a software set um, and a tool set and a support set. Because um, it's not just about you know throwing something out there and seeing what they do. You actually have to keep updating those SDKs uh, for the developers to keep using it, uh, making sure it's integrated well with the different development engines, whether it's Unity or Unreal. Uh, and for the different types of developers out there. Um, so that was a good uh, eye-opening experience of saying, okay, this is what the developers need. Now here's a real tool, here's a real set. Here, you know, it's running at better frame rate, it's running at higher resolution, it's now a really functional tool for those developers. Um, and here's the software tools to also use that. And that, that's a continuing process too. So over the next year, we would expect that software to also continue to update in terms of feature sets. Uh, and we'll continue to listen to the developers, we'll continue to listen to the, the community and see what else they need, and, and we'll continue building on that. And potentially hardware too, because if this is not consumer facing, whenever you guys decide to put this out for the consumers, you can evaluate the state of hardware. Yeah, and, and, and absolutely. This is a path into itself, the XR faceplate. That's right. Line. So, you know, Cosmos as a platform headset, you know, when you guys are engineering something that is gonna have a lifespan and you know are gonna work with mods, how do you decide what goes in here to commit to something and how long is that? platforms was the last. You know, it's interesting in that, you know, you also mentioned, I think, also about eye tracking. Like, we have, you know, a partner that actually has eye tracking modules that we can add to Cosmos. We do think that we should try to continue to have partners and a partner strategy where we can bring additional accessories and what are the problems we can solve as HCC and what are the problems we should work with partners on, on solving. Um, you know, things like wireless and making sure that it works with all of our products. Wireless mm -hmm. works with all the Vive products, Pro products, and Cosmos products. Mm -hmm. So um, we want to make sure that we continue that ecosystem of things that all support each other and work well together. The This product, we expect it to be in market for the foreseeable future and the next couple of years at a minimum. Uh, we do expect to keep growing uh, the tracking accuracy, keep growing input, um, new you know modular plate strategies and what else, what other problems can we solve mm -hmm. now and what are the problems we should solve now. Um, you know, it was time to update resolution for a high-end consumer level VR headset from Vive. That was, you know, it was time to bring Cosmos to market and bring uh, this strategy to market. Pro, you'll continue to see that line grow and what um, the enterprise customers and those professional users what they're asking for from us, um, and what accessories and what ecosystem of products that they are asking for. So you'll continue to see at the pro level um, SKUs. You'll continue to see um, uh, software platform. You'll continue to see us grow out our support for enterprise and B2B. That's a very concerted effort for HTC as a company. You'll continue to see the Cosmos strategy continue in the 
the consumer market and what we're going to do there to support the, the consumer market. And then our all-in-one strategy with the focus line, you'll continue to see that grow and you'll continue to see that grow as a strategy as well. So we do think that um, the B2B and enterprise professional space must be served, but it's also served very differently than the consumer market. Um, we think that we're answering a lot of problems with the Cosmos family and looking at it the way that we are um, and the different price points that we're looking at it from. And then uh, you'll continue to see what we can push the limits on in the, the all-in-one strategy as well and what we can do there. I was just going to add that as fast as the VR market is iterating and improving and new tech coming in all the time, we really didn't think a one-size-fits-all VR headset made sense to introduce and develop at this time. So that's really where Cosmos came from. And so you start to see on the consumer side, you know, you're going to have all these different functions. On the business side, you saw that we added eye tracking into the Vive Pro last year. So we're going to continue to innovate. We're going to continue to bring new functionality. And some of it's going to work. Some of it might not, you know, um, it might be just a tool set for developers to play around with and learn. That's great from our from our side. We really want to push what's possible with VR uh, and not just, you know, ship a black box VR headset. And I think you guys have done a great job in terms of partnering with not only software developers, but also hardware companies experimenting in things like input and sensors and and because it's expensive to put a lot of R&D into this really cutting edge technology. Uh, HEC has a long history, you know, manufacturing phones and lots of technologies and you guys can, VR headsets and, and hardware can piggyback on a lot of that. It's fair to say that you guys are always looking to the other areas of HEC to see what you can also incorporate and leverage? Yeah, absolutely. I think you'll see us um, really start to double down on what is possible with 5G technologies. Um, we're, we have been for many, many years uh, a partner to mobile operators, carriers globally, you know, um, in the United States as well as in Europe and, and uh, China and, and APAC. Um, you'll continue to see now where we, we really look at not only being, you know, somebody that helps the create um, strategy and the creators uh, and then looking at the play area of being able to play with these different headsets and play, um, you know, VR experiences and play with the content that the creators have made. Um, but we're also really active in creating things like smartphones where people got to play on their phones and interact um, with the content on their phones. So we're really good at that play you know, pillar, if you will. Um, but we're really starting to move into heavily the distribute um, area with things like 5G technology where we can actually uh, deliver these types of experiences across you know, a, uh, you know, a 5G network with a mobile carrier and looking at the future of going, okay, how do we move towards maybe a PC-less, you know, uh, future and being able to deliver these high, high-end uh, virtual experiences, whether it's augmented experiences or whether it's virtual experiences um, and the different mixture along that continuum of, of different types of experiences. But you'll see us really start to uh, put on display what is possible with 5G technology and what kinds of experiences users will be able to, to uh, have off of a wireless signal with you know, split rendering and 5G networks and edge compute you know, content delivery systems. Um, HCC isn't probably uh, noted or well noted for being you know, the company behind a lot of that, but you know, a year ago we were the first company to actually put somebody in super hot in a in an all-in-one headset that was you know running off of a 5G signal and that was the first company in the world that was able to do that. Um, this year you'll continue to see 5G enabled VR experiences you know from HTC at Mobile World Congress this year. I'm really excited for everybody to get a look at what's really possible uh, with that capability. Well, awesome. I'm really excited to check those out and the path forward. And it sounds like you guys have confidence in that roadmap. So we really can't wait to see what you guys put out in the future. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So a couple takeaways from that conversation. One, of course, is that they are improving and working on improving the Cosmos inside out based tracking system. And they do feel like it's good enough. Now, based on my experience, I still think they could be uh, better. And there still may be things that they can never address, like that near field tracking fidelity, um, like when you're holding those pistols and, and virtual SMGs up close in games like Pavlov. Um, but they seem to be happy with it. And I do wish that they continue on with that. But more importantly, that inside out tracking improvement is going to also pass on to a whole new product, which is the Cosmos Play. 
Now, the difference between the Cosmos, the Cosmos Play, and also the Cosmos Elite that they announced is a little bit confusing. So let's start actually on the high end. On the very high end is the Cosmos Elite. $900, you can pre-order it now. And what it essentially is, is the Cosmos with the same screen, the same optics, the same Halo style headband, but comes with that $200 external tracking faceplate and base stations and an original Vive wands. Uh, so best tracking fidelity um, and original style wands because it can't use this system. And it's for people, maybe businesses, who want to set up a large room scale style experiences that the base stations offer. There's also the Cosmos which is still gonna be on sale. They've kept it at $700, which was a little bit surprising to me. Uh, I thought that given the response to it, that they may have dropped the, maybe dropped the price to $600. That would have made more sense to me. Uh, but maybe they're giving themselves some wiggle room down the line toward the holiday season to do a sale and put it at 600. Because if, right now, if you look at an alternative like the Rift S at $400, the Cosmos with its better screen, I don't think is a $300 value on top of that, it's almost double. Uh, but there is a new entry level headset, the Cosmos Play. And yes, it also has the same great screen, same optics, same headband, Halo style strap. Uh, no headphones though, you have to use your own headphones. And the faceplate will be just a four camera base inside out tracking solution, which of course goes to why their software for inside out needs to continue improving. Now, this is a super interesting product because they haven't announced the price yet of the Cosmos Play. Um, now, if we do some reverse engineering of the math and you think of the Elite as 900 and the Cosmos as 700, then maybe the Cosmos Play is gonna be 500. I still think that's gonna be maybe too expensive, especially since you also don't get headphones. I'm hoping that it's gonna launch at somewhere between 400 or maybe 450 at the most, because at that price point, it does become an interesting alternative to the Rift S. Because the Rift S, yes, you get the Oculus ecosystem, you get something with out headphones, but you do get audio that pipes in, and you get you know decent inside-out tracking. Uh, does still have some kind of uh, areas volume here that you can't really uh, track, just like with any inside-out tracking system. Uh, but the Cosmos has the better screen and the opportunity to upgrade. There's a path forward. You could get the Cosmos Play for whatever it's going to launch at, and then uh, spend 200 bucks and get the external tracking plate, as well as the base stations and the controllers needed for that. But it gives you an opportunity that if you're the type of person that maybe games on a VR laptop uh, and you wanna take VR to a family or a friend's house or move it around your own house even, the Cosmos line with the option to go with Inside Out or Lighthouse based tracking system gives you an easy setup system to go to those places and move around and travel with it while you have your base stations maybe set up in your dedicated VR space or your home office for the best fidelity of tracking. As you can see, it's really easy. It took less than a minute or so just to restart the software, start, slap the faceplate on, and go between those two configurations. And of course, there's also the opportunity on the Cosmos side to go, on the Vive side, to go with their wireless tracking system, another modular way uh, to support the ecosystem. The other takeaway I had from that conversation is that they are committed to Cosmos and this design of this uh, headband style head strap, of these optics and these lenses as something that's gonna be for the consumers in the Cosmos family for the foreseeable future, for the next couple of years, as Dan mentioned. And the, the upgrade paths for that would be things like controllers or, or face plates. And I'm also of kind of two minds about that because I do think, one, it's great that HTC is says they're gonna be committed to this uh, system and this platform and supporting it with updates. But also, you know, it also means that they're not necessarily gonna switch away from the headband halo style head strap. And, and while you do have benefits of being able to flip up the headset like this, I still don't think this is as comfortable uh, as the deluxe audio head strap that they released with the original Vive, which they're gonna continue making because people are buying those to make FrankenQuest. 
So it is an interesting strategy for them. And you heard at the end, they alluded to something that they did announce over press release, the uh, Project Photon uh, augmented reality headset, uh, which if you listen to the conversation, the heavily implied would take advantage of 5G fully tetherless VR experiences. So they are in VR for the long run and mixed reality and augmented reality. Um, and I'm glad that they are putting things out like the external faceplate tracker. Um, but right now we're gonna hold our breaths and see what the price point is gonna be for that Cosmos Play and what the tracking is gonna be like for that out of the box before we make any determinations. Uh, if you have questions about this, please post them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll be back next time with more VR coverage. See you then.